Transylvania arose a Romanian knight of the Sacred Order of the Dragon, known as Draculia. Alright, let's get this Vlad the Impaler shit out of the way. If you don't want a history lesson, just skip at this time code here. The movie begins with the origin of Vlad Tepes III of Wallachia, as he becomes the famous vampire Dracula. After coming home from the crusade in 1462, seeing his wife Elisabetta commit suicide, he is told her soul will be doomed to hell for killing herself. Vlad curses out to God and in full extra goth fashion, stabs a cross and drinks the blood that comes out of it, as you do. The crusades that we think of, Christian knights marching into Jerusalem, ended roughly a hundred years before the events shown in the movie, for a slew of reasons, one of which was the Black Death. Not many people willing to go crusading when about half of them are dead. What remained were a bunch of border clashes between the Ottoman Turks and Eastern Europe. Vlad Tepes III of Wallachia, otherwise known as Vlad the Impaler and Vlad Dracula, was an actual person, and for years there's been this belief that Bram Stoker based his vampire on him. Back in 1972, historians Raymond T. McNally and Radu R. Fleshkew published In Search of Dracula, one of the first big English language biographies made on Vlad. So I mentioned Wallachia before, so just to clarify, uh, Wallachia became part of Transylvania in the 1860s, 30 years before Dracula was published, and then Transylvania joined Romania after World War I, eventually being part of the Soviet Union until 1989 with the overthrow of the Soviet government. In Search of Dracula was the big publicized book that connected Vlad to the fictional Dracula which would later be the inspiration to a documentary of the same name in 1975, further cementing the idea. While Falescu would go on and write other books about Romanian history and Vlad not really connecting him to the fictional Dracula, he would team up with McNelly and write other In Search of books, In Search of Frankenstein connecting Mary Shelley's Frankenstein to the medieval barons of the same name. There is also In Search of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, connecting the Robert Stevenson book and character to William Brody, a wealthy cabinet maker that was caught and sentenced to death for burglary and robbery in 1788. These never gained the popularity to their Dracula book. McNally would, in the 80s, also write another Dracula is really a historical figure book with Dracula was a woman, which was about Countess Elizabeth Bathory, a noble woman with a supposed body count challenging even Vlad. What I'm trying to say is that these guys, though decent historians when writing biographies on people, went well and beyond a gimmick tying famous Victorian fictional characters to vaguely similar real-life comparisons. In 1974, Richard Matheson of I Am Legend fame penned a script for what would become Bram Stoker's Dracula. Note this Bram Stoker's Dracula, which took inspiration from McNally and Fleshcube and tied the vampire Dracula to the story of Vlad the Impaler, and even adding a lost love reincarnated into the story that would later be reused for this 1992 version. McNally and Fleshcube can be credited to really legitimizing the idea that Vlad was a direct inspiration for Bram Stoker's creature. Which brings us to the question, did Bram Stoker base his Dracula on Vlad the Impaler? Yes, but no. Kinda. It's, it's hard to explain. Bram Stoker's original notes for writing Dracula were discovered in the Rosenbach Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I say discovered, but really it was just no one bothered to ask the curator of the museum, hey, you got Bram's Dracula notes in there by any chance? Until, again, McNally and Fleshcube, looking over old papers and pamphlets about our guy Vlad at the museum when an employee at the museum just casually asked if they would like to see the notes. Bram Stoker's original library card was also found for the London Library, so we also know which books he took out during the time of writing these notes. One of these books was An Account of the Principalities of Wallachia and Modolfa by William Wilkinson, published in 1820. The book is not very detailed and even gets some parts wrong, but you can see its direct correlation in the Finnish novel. In the novel Dracula, Jonathan Harker, a real estate solicitor visiting Dracula's castle to finish the paperwork, selling Dracula property in Purefleet just outside of London. There is a scene where Jonathan is eating. Dracula tells the story of his family's lineage, beginning with the Norsemen coming down from Scandinavia and the Huns riding from the west. Later on, he tells of the Draculas, a family of warriors that fought against the Turks, where we get this part here. When was redeemed that great shame of my nation, the shame of Kosava? When the flags of the Wallach and the Magyar went down beneath the crescent, 
Who was it but one of my own race, who was a void, crossed the Danube, and beat the Turk on his own ground? This was a Dracula indeed. Woe was it that his own unworthy brother, when he had fallen, sold his people to the Turk and brought the shame of slavery on them. This is a direct reference in Wilkinson's book. Beginning on page 17, we follow how the Draculas joined the Hungarians in fighting against the Turks in 1444. They were defeated. This first Dracula wanted to appear as an ally to the Turks by switching sides. That first Dracula was killed by the Hungarians and replaced by someone named Dan. He's only listed as Dan in Wilkinson's book. So, Dan went and fought the Turks with the Hungarians, then lost at the Battle of Kassava in Bulgaria. So, another member of the Dracula family took over and crossed the Danube River, succeeded for a short time only to be pushed back. While in hiding in Hungary, his brother named Bladis took over Wallachia as a puppet state for the Turks. At the bottom of the page, Wilkinson wrote that Dracula in the Wallachian language means devil. The Wallachians were, at that time as they are at the present, used to give this as a surname to any person who rendered himself conspicuous, either by courage, cruel actions, or cunning. This is the last we hear of the Draculas in Wilkinson's book. Cross-referencing what is known about Vlad is that, yes, his father was killed by the Hungarians by trying to pull a double cross and was replaced by someone who was involved in the Battle of Kassava. After that failed battle, another Dracula, Vlad, came to power only to then cross the Danube River and attacked a small force of Turks only to be driven back and replaced by his brother. Now going back to the novel Dracula, near the end of the story, while hunting for the vampire, Professor Abraham Van Helsing is talking with one of the other vampire hunters about having a colleague, Arminius, at the university, looking into the notes that Jonathan Harker wrote about his time at Dracula's castle, Helsing came back and said that he must indeed have been that Vivod Dracula who won his name against the Turk over the Great River on the very frontier of Turkey land. Further down, Helsing explains that the Draculas were a noble race of devil worshippers that gained their power through Satan. So there you go, uh, we have our direct link between Vlad the Impaler and our fictional Dracula, with even a character in the book flat out saying that yes, this is our Dracula. Couple problems with that though. The name Vlad is never mentioned once in Wilkinson's book. Both Wilkinson and by extension Stoker call the Draculas a family of people as if it's like a noble house. Vlad's dad, Vlad II, Dragul, chose the name Dracul, meaning the dragon. The Order of the Dragon was a group of knights started by Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary, in an attempt to reestablish the glory of the Templar Knights, the bad guys from Assassin's Creed, that fought in the Second and Third Crusade mentioned before. The Order of the Dragon was effectively a boys club of monarchs and knights that had some battles won, but nowhere near the influence of the Templars. The dragon also started to decline and eventually disappear not long after its founder's death. Vlad II liked the name, so his son, Vlad III, who was a lesser member of the Order, took the name Dracula, meaning Son of the Dragon. Vlad liked the name so much, he signed his name on royal decrees at times as Dracula. Wilkinson in his book also makes a couple other mistakes, like naming Vlad II's successor Dan, instead of his name Vladislav II. I would say it's fine because this story already has so many Vlads in it, but as mentioned before, the name Vlad doesn't appear in Wilkinson's book at all, so he has no excuse. Also, calling Vlad III's brother Bladis instead of Radu the Handsome, which, I don't know, I guess he's pretty good looking, but so good looking that that became his name? I don't know. To make a long story short, yes, the book directly says that this Dracula is in fact the same Dracula that is our Vlad the Impaler. But if you ask Bram Stoker if Dracula was based on him, he'd probably say something like Vlad the Who? Because he, like Wilkinson and, well, Vlad himself, just really, really, really liked the name Dracula.